Who knew the Odyssey LCD 2 and LCD 3 both got an update? Well, are they any better? Which one's right for you? Let's find out. Hey, I'm DMS. You're watching The Headphone Show presented by Headphones.com. I'm five hours away from home in a cabin in the middle of nowhere with these two headphones to find out, well, what's new? Odyssey upgraded the pads on these headphones, but things like the LCD-X got most of the attention. So let's go over it, starting with build and comfort. Like almost any Odyssey, they're not particularly light, either the 2s or the 3s. But that doesn't mean that Odyssey's ergonomics haven't changed over the years. This suspension strap, well, it helps quite a bit. I don't get hot spots on top anymore, and while the headphone does have some weight to it, the new pads are softer, they compress easier, they're no longer memory foam, and the leather just complies better to my head. Odyssey also updated the cable. This is the same kind of cable you'll get with things like the MM500. There's not much to say about it. It's lightweight, it's nice, it doesn't seem to tangle up too easily. No complaints. The biggest thing I notice in terms of build, well, it's really the finishing. The fine details just stand out a lot more. Like, look at the reflective finish on that wood. I think they just look great. The protective mesh inside the grill right here, the gold lettering on LCD3, it is just a beautiful looking headphone. But how do they sound? Well, that's I'm sure what you care most about, and me too. Let's do subjective sound first, and then we'll do objective sound with frequency response. Now the LCD 2 and 3 have always been known to lean a little bit warmer. This is definitely still the case. In fact, sonically, the LCD 2 hasn't changed much. It's just been gradually refined over time with this latest iteration being the same story. And that's not a bad thing, because the LCD 2, well, that's a pretty timeless headphone. It's been around for a long time, and people still seem to like it quite a lot. I know it's probably boring to say a headphone that's been around for a while is one that people like, but it's true, and this is just another good iteration of that same headphone. Soundstage is decent. It's like what you would expect from the other LCDs, though I think the phasers bring it a little bit closer to the ear. Timbre is surprisingly good for a planar. I think the LCDs have always had good timbre, especially with things like guitars. And if you're a person who likes anything with a thicker guitar, upright bass, or rock, well, the LCD 2 does a pretty great job. Being a planar, it also has great bass extension. There's a horse outside. He's just staring at me. Can I... here. Where were we? I feel like vocal presence is also a pretty good strength of the LCD 2, which is interesting because it kind of recesses a little bit in the upper mid-range and lower treble. Well, more than just a little bit. It has that classic Odyssey sound for the leather pads, but like I said, a bit more refined. There's still some level of peakiness to parts of it, which leads to an interesting discussion of, again, people saying, is the LCD too dark or not? But it still doesn't sound particularly peaky. That's hard to quantify. LCD 2 has just always been a headphone with unique sound, and that sound is pretty good. But if you're looking for neutral, that is not it. The LCD 3, on the other hand, well, it's not neutral either. In fact, this is an interesting one, because in some areas it sounds like it has more treble than the LCD 2, but as you'll see later when we measure it, well, it actually has less. But the LCD 3, it's really kind of a slept-on headphone. People don't talk about it that much. And when I listen to it, I wonder why, because it is really, really fast. I also brought my HD800S on this trip, just to balance things out and have a point that I'm very familiar with to return to. And despite the HD800S having a lot more treble, this absolutely wins in terms of detail. Though the timbre does suffer just a little bit compared to the LCD2, it is a headphone that could more easily be EQ'd. The horse is back. And I have tried EQing this headphone some, and I really, really like the results. It makes me want to go back to the office and swap on my old suede Odyssey vegan pads. See what that does to the response. Uh, maybe I'll try that next week. The summary of this subjective section is basically that the LCD2 is still a good headphone. Not a lot's changed, but it's a little bit smoother than before. But the LCD3, despite having a little bit weird timbre, well, 
it does something special. And if you've been in audio for a while, you know exactly what I mean. There's always these strange little facets of sound we chase after, that something unique that really brings life out of music and LCD-3, well, it does that. And maybe it's because it has bigger stage than the LCD-2. Maybe it's because it has more detail. But something about it just tickles me in an interesting way. I think this would be a good time to talk about objective sound and frequency response. So let's get into that. All right, I have these measurements pulled up here on my laptop. A few things to note. These are measured on the BNK5128. I'm going to show you the raw measurement, but I'm also going to show you the compensated measurement. It's just easier for people that are newer to the hobby when they see a compensated measurement. And for a lot of other reasons that if you want them better explained, you should watch the video linked in the description. It does actually make more sense because people might be used to reading a 43 AG measurement and then look at a 5128 raw measurement. Mm, those are just things you don't want to be comparing. Our red line here is the LCD3 and our green line is the LCD2. We see a really similar response and again, oddly enough, the LCD2 has more treble than the 3, yet the 3 still sounds like it has more treble than the 2 in some areas. Something I would like to do is remeasure both of these with an in-ear microphone soon just to see if that LCD3 does have more treble in my personal ear. Either way, looking at the compensated measurement, this is to diffuse field with 10 decibel slope. You can tell this is a warmer and darker leaning headphone, especially through the upper mid range and lower treble. Though as we get to the frequencies above five kilohertz, that treble quickly returns. We get some ups and downs that I guess are in close enough proximity, it kind of starts to level out. But depending on the tracks you're listening to, you can tell that there's a few dips and peaks throughout the upper ranges of this headphone. Again, something to note here is that the target we're compensating to doesn't necessarily mean that flat is perfect. It just means that flat is close to what people perceive as neutral. And from that, it's very important to take in that your listening preferences will vary a lot and some people will like a darker, warmer sound. Some people will like a thinner, brighter sound, and some people are probably chasing that neutral. One thing that I do find a little bit more natural about the LCD-3 than the LCD-2, though, is that the LCD-3's ear gain peaks at around 2.8K, 2.7K, which is generally where our natural ear gain peaks, whereas the LCD-2 peaks around 3.3K. That's not a massive difference, but to me, it does make certain things in vocals sound a little bit more natural on the LCD-3, despite it not having quite as good of timbre for things like guitars. Okay, so conclusion, LCD-2 and LCD-3, now that they have the current revision of pads, should you consider them? Are they for you? What's the summary? Well, the LCD-2 has a nice warm sound. It has that timbre with guitars that people have come to love for rock and all kinds of other genres. It's a thick textured and detailed sound with an improvement in comfort over the previous generations. The finishing is nice and overall it's a pretty solid headphone, though I'm not quite as emotionally compelled by it as I am by the LCD3. This is a considerably more expensive headphone, but also has a lot more detail and that magic element that's kind of hard to pin down. It does take to EQ just a little bit better, but if you're one of those people chasing that extra bit of detail, the LCD3 is a clear step up. One thing I want to note though, is that the Odyssey MM500, one of their newer models, well, it's better tuned than both the LCD2 and LCD3. And I would say that it sits right in between them in terms of detail. In a lot of ways, I think that the MM500 is probably the better headphone, but the LCD3, it does something special. There's that horse again. But it's raining, I'm cozy in a cabin, and I think I'm gonna stop filming and start listening to music again. I hope this video helped you figure out if either of these headphones is right for you. Outside of that, I think that is gonna wrap up this video. Guys, if you liked it, please leave a like down below. Comment letting me know what you want to see in the future. If you wanna get active in the community, you can at the forums or Discord, both linked in the video description. And as always, don't forget to stick around, subscribe for more videos like this in future. Till next one, guys. Peace.